Uh, as a new, as several of the speakers have talked about today, uh, NBIoT is one of the fundamental elements uh, on the path to 4.5G. Uh, the platform and technology enables operators to approach an entirely new market that had never been previously addressed. Uh, we actually have a video here, so let's cue the video to uh, walk people through what NBIoT means. Cue the video. I'm Emmanuel from One Way Technologies. I'm currently standing in an office park near the city center of Shanghai, and I want to show you a demo of a smart parking solution we have developed in Shanghai. First, in each parking lot, we have installed one sensor to report the status if it is free or occupied. Second, in this sensor, we have integrated one narrowband Internet of Things models to report towards the control center the status of the parking. Third, we have one app you can download on every smartphone to let you know in real time for every driver if the parking is available or not. Here we are in the control center of the office park building. We have two dedicated screens for the smart parking solution. In those screens, you can see in real time the status on the parking lot, if it is free or available. Smart parking solution is just one of several applications we are developing today on the narrowband Internet of Things. One way has more than 10 projects around the world on the narrowband Internet of Things. It's a very, very exciting new platform and technology. Uh, MBIoT was pioneered by Huawei and in partnership with Vodafone, which was the first operator to partner with Huawei on the platform. We're extremely honored to have um, Lori Thorpe, who runs MBIoT for Vodafone Group globally. Everybody, please join me in welcoming Lori as the next speaker. Lori? Hi everyone, uh, my name is Laurie Thorpe and I work in uh, Vodafone Group Enterprise Technology. Um, I'm leading the uh, low power wide area uh, program within Vodafone Group. And I'm here today to talk to you about MBIoT and the low power wide area opportunity. So um, this is our vision, um, this is the Vodafone machine-to-machine -machine vision to connect to every machine to transform lives and businesses. And I would say that it's never been more true than it is today. Um, LPWA is a key enabler for the Internet of Things. And it is, we see it as a key component in unlocking the value of large-scale interconnected web of devices. Sorry, the animation shouldn't have been there. So um, I'll give you a little bit of background and possibly you've already uh, discussed this previously because I know that it's come up in some of the other presentations. Um, but I'll just go through why low power wide area is so important to, to Vodafone and to the industry. So first of all, what is it? Um, low power wide area covers um, a number of technical and non-technical aspects. Uh, the technical aspects include low power um, and wide area, the clues in the name. Um, also covers high point density, uh, high propagation rates, uh, relatively low uh, bandwidth, and constrained latency. Um, the other aspect, which is the non-technical aspect, is around the cost. So it's around low uh, availability of low cost devices. Um, why does it matter? It matters because low power wide area is going to open up the opportunity to address a market that we weren't able to address before with the legacy cellular networks. 
And we can see this is one of the many forecasts um, that are currently circulating. And we can see that um, by 2024, the majority of machine-to-machine -machine connections will be on low power wide area. Um, I believe we've only scratched the surface in terms of the opportunities that low power wide area will, um, will offer. The, there are multiple technologies that can be used to address low power wide area. Currently, the market is dominated by proprietary technologies and the cellular options are catching up. So, in terms of Vodafone's strategy, we strongly believe that cellular is the way to go. And that is the reason why we have invested so much in MBIOT. So I'll give you a little bit of history. Um, last year at the MWC, we did a joint demo um, between Vodafone, Huawei, and Ublox. This was a demo uh, for a water meter, and we showed this water meter that, um, that used, at the time it was called cellular um, IoT connectivity, which is a predecessor of NB-IoT. Um, at the time, there was a great deal of fragmentation in the market. So we had the proprietary technologies, we had the different vendors that were all sort of looking at different, different options, developing different things, and we've made a great deal of progress since then, um, a lot more than I would have believed possible. The, so in a year, we've managed to get to a point where there is consensus in the industry to pursue cellular technologies. We've aligned on what those technologies are. Um, they're all committed on, on the roadmap and they will deliver the benefits that we need to address the LPWA market. Why did we choose this? So NB, we see NBIOT as being part of our part of our connectivity portfolio. So it sits together with the other, um, with the other existing uh, cellular technologies and we will be evolving those technologies um, to address the new um, IoT opportunity. Why did we choose MBIoT? So we wanted a global standard we wanted something that would be secure, reliable, and scalable. We want it to be an integrated part of the Vodafone M2M managed connectivity service. And we want to build solution-centric offerings, end-to-end -end solution-centric offerings, to address new, new and existing customers and new and existing verticals. So we're extremely pleased that the industry is now aligned. It's been a very, very bumpy road. And 3GPP is now due to be standardized as part of, um, NBIOT is due to be standardized as part of 3GPP R13. So why do we need it? These are the initial verticals that we are looking at addressing. And there are different characteristics of NBIOT that will be used for the different verticals. So depending on what is going to be critical for a particular application, NBIOT can flexibly address that, either through the extended battery life or through the extended uh, propagation and we can see that a lot of these verticals are verticals where the cellular industry has struggled to address up until, up until today. We see this as part of our overall portfolio. So we're looking at a spectrum of performance that goes all the way from the high end, um, high throughput, 
all the way to the lower end where you have low throughput and lower cost. And this is very, very key as part of the Vodafone strategy to enable us to address all of the different opportunities and to build all of the different end-to-end -end solutions that require uh, different types of connectivity. We believe that Sorry, we believe that um, the key here is going to be flexibility. So it's going to be the ability to have the right connectivity solution for the application. Um, and I'm pleased to say that the vertical industry are with us on this in that as we socialize the benefits of NBIOT, we're seeing a real interest in what it can do for the different verticals. And I think this is only the beginning. So these are one, some of the obvious applications, but there are many more that are yet to be explored. So our strategy. So I was saying that all of this started a year ago and we've made a great deal of progress. Um, so today we can say that we have a proof of concept that is live in the Vodafone Spain network in uh, Zona Moncada in Valencia. And we, are, we will be demonstrating that here at the, at the MWC. So I'd like to invite you all to come to the, to the Vodafone stand or the GSMA Innovation City stand to have a look at, um, at what we've done in the, in the real live network. Our strategy, so 2016 is, it's about preparation. So as we, as we know, 3GPPR13 will be finalized in the, next, in the next few months. The specification is on track to be completed. And we see 2016 as being preparation for a full-blown launch in 2017. We will be evolving the technology at the moment. We are working with a pre-standard technology and we will be evolving the technology to, um, to align with what, what is standardized. And we will be doing trials and proof of concepts to test the technology, but also to, um, to engage with the verticals uh, in building end-to-end -end solutions. The other aspect that is key to NBIOT's success is building up the ecosystem. And again, there's a lot of work that's being done. So this morning, um, there was a NBIOT forum summit took place here. There were about 500 people attending, um, people from the telecoms industry, but also people from the different verticals. There was a panel which I thought was extremely encouraging because we also saw how the, how the vertical industries are seeing this technology and the benefits that they see that this technology can bring compared to what's available, available today. And we can see that they really appreciate the importance of the security aspect, the, uh, the longevity, um, the reliability, so the, um, the ability to know that once you deploy something, it, the performance is not going to degrade because somebody else moves in and starts using that particular uh, spectrum. So ecosystem development um, is, is going to be key to the success of this technology. The MBIOT forum was established uh, in December through the GSMA, so it's part of the Mobile Internet of Things program and is working within the industry, within the telecoms industry and within the Connected Living program to build up that ecosystem and to ensure that the benefits of the technology are socialized and that we, um, we are building the mechanism to ensure that MBIOT will be a technology that will be easy to use and that will deliver the benefits that, that we expect it to deliver. The third aspect is around customers. So again, their LPWA has now gained a great deal of, of momentum in the, in the recent months. We're now getting many, many requests from our customers and we see that there is a willingness to wait for the technology 
we need to get a move on, so we do need to hurry up because there are many opportunities out there that are really eager and keen to get, to get that in their network and to trial it. So time to market is going to be key for us. <laughs> So here I wanted to share with you what we've done in uh, recent months with, together with Huawei and with Ublox and with one of our customers. Um, this is a water meter company in Aquas de Valen in, uh, in Valencia. So you can see here, you can see here this device here is an MBIoT device and we've installed a number of devices in the in real water meter locations we've update, we've upgraded the Vodafone Spain network using um, using 200 kilohertz of 900 GSM spectrum we've upgraded six base stations the the solution includes the upgrade of the existing Huawei um, RAN access nodes we've deployed a virtualized core and we've managed to send the first pre-standard MBIoT message over a live commercial network. So this took place in December. We are now going into the next phase of the project where we will be aligning to the full NBIOT standard. The good news is that we've verified the performance of NBIOT and we've seen that we can get coverage enhancement, so we verified additional 20 dB versus GSM coverage. We verified that there is no service degradation to the existing 2G and 3G network, and we verified the end-to-end -end service la layer connectivity. Um, and this is just the start. So we will be working with Aquas de Valencia to build the, an end-to-end -end full pre-commercial solution in the next few months. So, as I mentioned, 2016, I see it as a year of preparation. I see it as a year where NBIoT will be trialed, it will be tested, we will be looking at how it performs. We will be um, looking at the different modes of operation. Part of the standardization is, um, the standardization includes three different modes of operation, which makes it very, very flexible to deploy. So it can be deployed in band, guard band, and standalone. Um, we'll be testing all of these modes of operation. We'll be working with uh, the different customers to build devices to integrate chipsets and modules into the, um, into the application devices. And in the second half of 2016, we expect to be performing a number of pre-commercial trials uh, in different Vodafone networks around the world. 2017, we expect the first full-blown commercial deployments. Uh, the key success factors here are, as I mentioned, the ecosystem development. The other key factor is cost. So the expectation is that this technology will be a low-cost technology. This applies both to the device cost but also to the connectivity cost. So we have some challenges to meet in terms of ensuring that that's the case because this will determine how much of the market we are actually able to, to address. Thank you.